What if Joey actually beat Marik during Battle City? For those that don't know, Joey had qualified for the Battle City Finals alongside powerhouses like Yugi, Kaiba, Mai, Bakura, Ishizu, Odeon, and Marik. Whilst in the finals, Joey was able to defeat Odeon, though to be fair, a little bit of it was self-inflicted by Odeon. I guess that'll teach him for summoning a fake Egyptian god card. Following Odeon's defeat, the next opponent Joey would face was the big bad antagonist of the season, Marek Ishtar. Who, let's get this straight, not only had a Millennium item, but he also wielded one of the Egyptian god cards. The strongest of the three as well the Winged Dragon of Ra. Throughout their duel, Marek consistently toys with Joey, attempting to kill him not through life point damage, but instead through the Shadow Game's rather dubious effects. You see, the more Marek destroys, tortures, or inflicts damage to Joey's monsters, the more of that damage will be inflicted to him as well. Those are the Shadow Game rules, and due to this, Marek hopes to just straight up kill Joey before the Shadow Game takes his soul. However, this would ultimately come back to bite Marek, as he underestimated how resilient and stubborn Joey was, as after taking the full force of Ra's attack, to Marek's horror, Joey is still standing. And as Marek eloquently puts it, If he succeeds in attacking my life points, I'll lose the duel and my Egyptian God card! And so, Joey draws, he gets his gear freed, the Iron Knight, summons it to the field, and attempts to declare an attack. However, at the last possible second, Joey collapses. Joey, no! Due to Joey being unconscious and a technicality, he loses the duel. And for those that didn't watch the original, Joey actually does die here for a brief period, as Mokuba notes that he's stopped breathing. What happens after this? Well, Marek goes on to play Yugi in the finals. He's ultimately defeated. Evil Marek is vanquished. Good Marek reveals the secrets of the Tomb Keepers and gives him his Egyptian god card, the Winged Dragon of Ra. But the question then becomes, what if? What if Joey defeated Marek here and now? How would it change the rest of the season or the rest of the series? Let's take a look. Moving into hypothetical territory, Joey has just tanked the attack from a direct blow from the Winged Dragon of Ra. He is now circling the dream. However, Joey looks into the crowd. He sees all his friends cheering for him and telling him he's got this. He thinks of Mai in this moment and what losing this duel would mean for her, and even Kaiba, out of absolutely nowhere, throws a backhanded compliment his way. Nothing substantial, but just a little, I didn't think you had it in you, Wheeler. Not bad. <laughs> just something at that level. For the collection of all this, Joey gains an extra small burst of energy. With this extra energy, he is successfully able to summon his gear freed and declare a direct attack on Marek. Marek, unable to defend himself, loses the duel. So, what happens next? Well, obviously, Joey collapses. His heart can stop again. I, I don't really mind, sure. But he's gonna be rushed off the hospital, and that's where Joey's gonna remain for just a little while. Yami Marek, who had plunged this duel into a shadow game, well, since he was defeated in a duel, technically, the shadows should take him. It is unclear if both Yami Marek and Marek would have died together, or if only Yami Marek would have died this instance. If you're asking me my opinion, I think every time that Yugi and Yami were in a shadow game together, if they would have lost, they would have lost their souls together. I think the same would probably apply to Marek and maybe Yami Marek as well. So both of them most likely would have just gone to the shadows kind of thing. Now this creates a really awkward situation because now Odeon and Ashizu have lost their brother. This is the whole point of them coming into this tournament to try and save Marek. So I personally think they would hold a little bit of amniosity towards Joey. Yami Marek was making Marek evil, but I guess you'd still hold Joey accountable for killing your brother. You could spin off the next season somehow as 
Ishizu and Odeon being antagonistic towards Joey in a kind of way. And I think that'd be kind of interesting. Like for closure, they feel like they have to duel against Joey to take revenge. And then maybe through a duel in like a later season, they finally like reconcile with Joey and realize like Marik had gone too far. We don't really blame you. We just, I don't know what to do with all this frustration. You know what I mean? It could be quite touching. That could be a, a nice moment. This does create another problem though, because Marik has the secrets of the tomb uh, engraved on his back. Maybe Ashizu tells Yugi, yeah, you can just pull my brother's shirt up. Look at his back. There you go. There's the secrets if you really want them. Why not? But that seems a bit... I don't think they'd do that. So it seems that the Pharaoh would either have to find another way to go to the afterlife at the end of the series, or ultimately, this means that the Pharaoh is stuck in the present throughout the rest of little Yugi's life, I guess. Now, it's possible that Good Marik could have survived the defeat at the Shadow Game. Joey does survive as well after he lost the Shadow Game in the original timeline. But to be fair, he collapsed before the final life point damage was dealt. So it might have been like a shadow game loophole like he would have died but because he collapsed they're like all right he's in a coma he died for a bit the shadow game's like that's good enough for me i'm sure he won't recover from that so i mean it's possible now this is the part i think you've all been waiting for i think kaiba would be the one to do this because he just he just don't care he goes up to the unconscious or dead marik takes the wing dragon of ra and says this is joey's now he thinks he's gonna win it off him later but that won't happen he goes to the unconscious joey and just puts the Winged Dragon of Ra next to him. Maybe also gives him a little bit of a compliment there because keep in mind that Kaiba has no respect for Joey, except in the original Japanese, after Joey tanks the attack from the Winged Dragon of Ra and makes Marik reveal all of its effects, he does compliment him in a backhanded kind of way. So I honestly think Joey getting into the finals would completely change the dynamic of Kaiba and Joey a little bit in the later seasons. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but Joey is now the owner of the Winged Dragon of Ra, and this isn't necessarily a great thing, but we'll also talk about this a little bit later too. So Joey's in a coma. Yugi and Kaiba now do their duel. Pretty much everything goes out as normal, and I do think that Joey would still awaken from this coma, hearing that his friend is in trouble. Joey comes down to the duel. His presence is what helps Yugi get the motivation in order to win, because Let's be honest, they have a strong bond. That's a big boost. But not only that, seeing Joey and remembering the promise that the two of them made that they will duel in the finals, I think that will spur Yugi to win the duel against Kaiba, defeats him, takes the Obelisk of the Tormentor from Kaiba. So now Yugi has two Egyptian gods and Joey has the final Egyptian god, the Winged Dragon of Ra. I think after Kaiba losing here, the realization that not only is he further down in the tournament than Yugi, but also Joey Wheeler, I think he's going to have a little bit of a self-reflective moment kind of thing. So I think this would carry over into the next season. We'd see a, a slightly different Kaiba. I'm going to say a slightly more respectable Kaiba. And that's really hard to think. It's like a mutual respect. He doesn't like them that much still, but... You know, I think it's a big deal for Kyber. I don't know, I think so. Now, it is the Battle City Finals. Yugi versus Joey. No stakes at all, just a big duel between two best friends and a follow-up to their original duel that they had all the way back in Duelist Kingdom and what Yugi and controlled Joey had in the middle of the season as well. While I'm not about to guess the whole duel, I can make some educated guesses on some things that probably would happen, like some iconic moments. At the very least, I think Yugi would get out Red Eyes Black Dragon against Joey in the duel. I think this is a crucial moment where Joey will defeat Red Eyes in battle, and then he will steal it from Yugi's grave somehow. The way the old school Yu-Gi-Oh used to work is if you have a monster that you've taken from your opponent and it goes to the graveyard, it goes to your graveyard. So you kind of own that card for the rest of the duel. So I think that will be the catalyst for spoilers. I think Joey still loses this duel, but at the end of the duel, Joey goes to hand Red Eyes back to Yugi, but Yugi stops him and says, no, you earned that card back in the middle of this duel. You keep that card. That is yours again, Joey. That was a fantastic duel. So I think that's how he gets his red eyes back. I think it would have been a sweet reference to their first duel if Joey got out Time Wizard again and did the Time Roulette on Dark Magician and Yugi gets out the Dark Sage. But Joey had a backup plan to punish Yugi for doing the same play kind of thing. I thought that would be quite cool if he did something along those lines. And of course, because this duel is the, the, the accumulation of everything that Joey has learned throughout the entire season and all the things he's built up, I think Joey gets out 
every single one of the ace monsters he has earned throughout this tournament. And by that I mean all of them out at the same time. Insect Queen, Jinzo, and Legendary Fisherman all on the field at the same time. But that is not the big moment. The big moment is possibly when he tributes all three of these monsters to summon the Winged Dragon of Ra. You thought I'd forgotten about it, didn't you? No, I hadn't. Fun fact, by the way, the Winged Dragon of Ra would have had 6,450 attack points had it been summoned this way, but we need to talk about it. The big issue with Joey inheriting the Winged Dragon of Ra is he doesn't know ancient Egyptian language. He has no connections to ancient Egypt. So theoretically, he can't use this card. It'd be the same as what happened to Mai when she tried to use the Winged Dragon of Ra. So this is the part where it's really crucial to establish, did Marek survive or not? I think if good Marek did survive, he would impart to Joey the effects of the Winged Dragon of Ra and tell him the summoning chant. And Joey would recite the summoning chant in the dub in his Brooklyn accent. Yo, Winged Dragon of the Sky, raise your mind. <laughs> That'd be funny. I don't know. That'd make me laugh. I think if Marek didn't survive, then I think Joey doesn't use this card in this duel. He simply just plays without it. Another duel where he's playing against the user with Egyptian gods and he doesn't have it. And then after the duel, after he loses, he just gives it to Yugi. And the fact that can he use the card at all because he doesn't have an Egyptian heritage in any way. The Winged Dragon of Ra could be like a, an Elder Wand kind of situation. He earned it in battle. He defeated its previous owner. So Ra might respect him enough. So we'd be like, yeah, all right, you can use me. It's it's fine. But let's just say that Joey does have the Winged Dragon of Ra. I think he plays it like completely differently to how Marek did. Marek's whole like play was dumping the Winged Dragon of Ra in the graveyard, bringing it back with Monster Reborn, and then just trying to abuse the opponent at time. I think Joey makes it legit. He puts three monsters on the board. He summons it. He actually gets the attack boosting effect, which Marek hardly ever did. But I think ultimately... Joey would be defeated by the Pharaoh, and it would end with Yugi still the Battle City champion. Joey gives Yugi the Winged Dragon of Ra. Yugi declines the Red Eyes Black Dragon and says that you've earned it, Joey. You can keep that card. And the duel ends there. Yugi first, Joey second, and I guess Kaiba and Good Marek in third place. They wouldn't do a battle for the bronze, I don't think. I don't think either one of them cared enough. After this tournament, I think the rest of the series just plays out exactly how it did. I mean, nothing's really changed. I think maybe how Kaiba perceives Joey might change slightly for the upcoming seasons. And depending on if Marek died, maybe the very end of the series might have changed as well. But that's dependent on that. And I think the big change would be moving into Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. When Kaiba creates Duel Academy, he makes the three dorms. He puts the best dorm as Obelisk Blue because he used it. He puts the second best dorm as Slifer Red because Yugi. And then he puts the third worst one as the Winged Dragon of Ra because it was Joey's card. So that means when Jaden goes to Duel Academy, he gets put in the worst dorm. Jaden is now a raw yellow to begin with. <laughs> I think that's kind of funny. Is there anything you want to add or do you want to argue against any of my points? More than happy to hear them in the comments section below. If you want to check out another what if, well, what if Exodian Forbidden One wasn't thrown into the ocean? How would the series have played out then? But thank you all for watching, guys. I hope you all enjoy the video. Catch you later.